What up guys, Adrian from E-Motorcycle, and in today's video we're going to be covering basically five questions about the MotoGuzzi V7, which are going to be the core of my final review of this bike. I had the chance to ride my buddy's MotoGuzzi V7 for a month while he was out of town, and now it's my time to answer your questions about it. In this video I'll be covering what I like about the Guzzi V7, what I dislike about it, how it is for longer distances, how it was traveling with a passenger, whether or not I would recommend it, and I'll do a little comparison of my thoughts and feelings towards it versus the Triumph Bonville. Getting started, the first question for the review is, what do I like about the MotoGuzzi V7? Well, there are four key things that I like about it that I think a lot of you guys will like about the bike as well. First one is obviously retro looks. This thing oozes nostalgia and a retro vibe with its classic motorcycle lines. So if you're into that, you are obviously going to love the V7. This kind of goes without saying. You take one look and you either love the thing or you hate it. Most people, I think, will love it. Second thing I really liked about the V7 was that V-twin motor. Personally, I find inline fours way too buzzy and all or nothing. I find parallel twins really kind of boring. And in my opinion, V-twins are great. They have great torque and personality. The Guzzi is no exception to this. The Guzzi's V-twin has a lot of character. Some of it was good, some of it was bad. We'll get into that later. But overall, I give it a big thumbs up. Third thing I liked about the Moto Guzzi V7 was sound. Speaking of that motor, bone stock, this might be the best sounding bike from factory. When you think motorcycle sound, your brain might think Harley Davidson, but they need aftermarket pipes or they sound terrible these days. The V7 sounds good right out of the box. Sure, putting on some pipes can only make these things sound louder and in many people's opinions, including my own, better. But even just stock, this is probably the best sounding bike from factory, period. Fourth thing that I liked about this bike, shaft drive. After belt, shaft drive is my second favorite final drive type. For ease of maintenance, simplicity, whether you're mechanically inept or just plain old lazy, you will love having a shaft drive motorcycle for how simple they are to maintain. Just drain the fluid at the bottom, put some new fluid in the top, forget about it for another year or two. It's that easy. Second question that I wanted to address in this video is how is the Moto Guzzi V7 for longer rides? Granted, I did limited highway travel on this bike, but I did find it fairly comfortable when I was on the highway. It's pretty stock, the one I was on, except for this factory windscreen, which I think does an amazing job of protecting the rider from the wind, and it makes highway riding pretty comfortable compared to a normal traditional naked bike or compared to how this Guzzi would feel without the windscreen. So if you are planning on doing extended highway runs on your Guzzi or just everyday commuting on the highway to get to work, I would definitely recommend grabbing one of these windscreens. The V7 really isn't designed for extended touring, but the ergonomics on the bike are actually fairly comfortable, and my friend Glenda has taken hers, she has two, she's taken one of them across a good chunk of Canada and back, and she has no plans of upgrading. Like I said, she bought a Guzzi, put a whole bunch of kilometers on it, bought another Guzzi, and keeps them both. So touring can be done, even though that's not really the designed purpose of the bike. The third question I want to address is, how is the Moto Guzzi V7 with a passenger? Admittedly, this is one of the things about the Moto Guzzi V7 that I didn't like. Your passenger needs to be on the smaller side or else get their own Guzzi. And there are two reasons for that. The first one is, the Guzzi V7 seat is not very long. Uh, I had the bike parked next to a Triumph Bonville, and I found that the seat on the Bonville extended several inches further back than the V7s, so together you will be much more cramped. The second reason why it's not great for riding with a passenger is the V7 passenger section is almost the same height as the rider's seat, but the passenger's pegs are much higher. So you guys are sitting almost evenly, which means your passenger has a great view of the back of your helmet for the entire ride. But it also means that while your feet are going to be lower and therefore your legs are more stretched, your passenger is going to be much more cramped up. Not really comfortable if you have a very long-legged, beautiful woman and you're trying to take her home and she's like, this is annoying. Now I can tell you guys, from my late teens to my early 20s, I couldn't afford a car and all I had was a motorcycle for me and my girlfriends to get around on. So if I were still in that position or if I wanted a bike, I could take a girl out for a fairly regular ride. This probably wouldn't do it for me. It would probably be a deal breaker. But this question also ties into two other questions that I was asked about while I was boring this bike. And one is a comparison to the Triumph Bonville, and the other one was what I disliked about the Guzzi V7. So let's get into that. So I feel like we can't talk about the Moto Guzzi V7 to people who might be interested in buying it without also talking about the Triumph Bonville. And because I came into this as both a V7 fan and a Bonville fan, this is something that I'm really wanting to share with you guys because it's something that I care about, really. I came into this and I wouldn't know what bike I would want at the end of it. Would I want a Bonville? Would I want a V7? Which one would I prefer? Would my own Italian heritage make me have a bias for the V7? 
Would the sensibility of having a Triumph dealer not even two miles away from me, just down the street, mean that getting a Triumph would make more sense? And yeah, full disclosure, there is a Moto Guzzi dealer that's like 20 minutes away, but still, Triumph's aftermarket selection is a lot bigger. So yeah, which motorcycle do I prefer? Well, what's right for me might not be right for you, but here is my own opinion. The Triumph is bigger, faster, heavier, taller, more top heavy, and with a better selection of aftermarket parts and dealer support in most of North America. Flip side to that, the Moto Guzzi, lighter, sexier, smaller, better balanced, more nimble, better character, and dealer support will vary depending on where in the world you are. I can tell you from personal experience, both bikes have a phenomenal and a little bit cuckoo fanatical following and fan base, so you will find lots of support online from users, even if you don't necessarily have a dealer down the road. Now, flipping back to my own story, if I was in my mid-20s, once I got my car, I would have loved the Moto Guzzi V7. I didn't have the extra money for extra mods, I could basically just afford a bike and insurance and that was it. So aftermarket parts and availability wouldn't have mattered to me. A lightweight, well-balanced motorcycle with a low seat height would have been the welcomed choice for a less seasoned rider than I am now. Overall, I think both bikes look great. But now today, my big gripe with the V7 is the lack of passenger space. I do a lot of two-up riding, so for that reason, and because of 14 years of motorcycle riding, I don't really care for the lower seat height or the lighter weight, I would probably take the extra power and the extra space of the Triumph Bonville. Again, what's right for me might not be right what's right for you, and we'll get into that a little bit later when I talk about whether or not I would recommend the Guzzi V7. So now let me tell you guys the three things that I disliked about the Guzzi V7. And to be fair, I overall like this bike, but I do have three kind of big grievances with it. First one is, and I don't want to be a dead horse, but basically at 5'11", it can feel a bit cramped for an experienced rider, especially if you want to bring a passenger with you. We've talked enough about that. The second thing is, finding first gear, which is usually the easiest gear to find, is actually kind of hard until the bike warms up or is revved up. And the Guzzi people I talk to seem to see like, oh, must be your first time on a Guzzi, huh? And I guess that's supposed to make it okay. <laughs> And maybe I've just been spoiled with Japanese motorcycles and, and bikes that you just, you hit the starter and you wait a couple seconds, you hit it down to first gear and off you go. Um, but that's kind of what I'm used to. So this Guzzi was a bit of a culture shock for me. Probably even more so than for other people because I live in Toronto, Canada. It's a cold climate. It was like pretty damn cold out when I first got this Guzzi and I was in bundled up galore and it just kept not shifting into first. It was pretty annoying. Even like several kilometers into my ride, it was still doing this weird thing. And I don't know if that's the particular state of the one that I rode in, but it's just something for you guys to think about. If you're in a warmer climate, you can probably ignore this. But uh, if you are looking to buy a Guzzi, check it out and see if you have the same issue as I did or not. Let me know in the comments. And the third thing I disliked about the Guzzi was limited aftermarket parts. If you're not the type to customize your motorcycle much, you can totally skip this. But before I even buy a motorcycle, I have like a mental wish list of all the things that I want to do to it. And trying to find parts that are affordable and a big selection, it's a lot trickier on the Guzzi V7 than it is for other competitors, let's say. And the last question I want to answer is, would I recommend the Moto Guzzi V7? Well, if you're in the beginner to intermediate rider range, yes. If you're an experienced rider looking for something on the smaller, lighter side and you don't care about taking passengers, yes. If you're not looking for a high-performance machine, like the Yamaha XSR series, for example, yes. But if you want something with all the modern bells and whistles, a huge aftermarket, comfy ergonomics, the ability to tour, the ability to comfortably take a passenger, this isn't it. The Guzzi V7 is a simple retro motorcycle. It's been updated with modern technology. It has character and vintage charm galore for sure, but it is, is great for a solar rider. If that's good enough for you, you'll love this motorcycle. But if you want something more, this isn't it. However, if what you're looking for is a simple, elegant, classic, charismatic way of getting around on two wheels, this is an excellent choice for you.